creeps in, are doing the exact same thing. They'll just fight each other endlessly and mindlessly. Your job as the heroes is to turn the tide of battle, destroy the enemy structures, kill the enemy creeps, and destroy the enemy base. The battle begins. Yeah, they actually, you can see the path they follow. It's like this beaten it's really path. Cool, yeah, it's yeah. literally a road, isn't it? Yeah, and yeah. so that's where they're going to march towards and LGD Peace. as their creeps spawn. There they are. Yeah. So Lin uh, on the Dragon Knight, he will be the mid lane hero. Uh, Shane, maybe you could talk to us about the lanes and what they mean. Okay, so basically, when you when you draft your heroes, you you kind of you have in your head which lane you're going to send each hero to and and why he's going to go there. So they send Lin mid because he needs to get his level six, which allows him to use his ultimate. He needs to get that really quickly. And the least amount of heroes in the lane, the more experience you're going to gain because experience is shared among among all the heroes in the lane. So they they want to send Lin mid and oh, okay. look wait, look at bottom real quick. Oh, just a and what what uh, what IG have done here is actually kind of it re it's a strange thing to happen because they've done an offensive try lane, which means they've they've aggressively put three of their heroes to try and because remember in the last game Ra Rabbit playing the Razor here, he just got everything. He was like really powerful really early in the game. So they're trying to shut this hero down and not allow him to get that start. But I was. I was it, what, it's really risky doing this, isn't it, Ted? Like, yeah, we've actually seen a ton of games where they've gone for this aggressive tri lane and it hasn't worked because uh, when we talk about safe lanes and farming and things like that, let's just talk about farming very quickly is killing enemy creeps. That gives you money. Oh, dear rabbit. He, that was that long time, that stun from Twan. We didn't actually see the arrow, but he, he launched one of Marana's arrows a long way through the trees. It surprised the uh, the razor, and then because it's like a five second stun, that's an eternity in Dota to be stunned for, uh, and it means that all the other heroes on your team can pile in and do a load of damage. Now, as you can see, LGD are under their tower. In other words, they're right next to their tower. They're in relative safety here, but even then, Rabbit died because of that long time stun. Oh, so, oh wow! And now look at this. Again. They caught Conquer with a stun too, but this time, as you can see, he's scuttling back towards his tower and his and his comrades, but. The, the creeps, so the green creeps being the radiant creeps, the red creeps being the dire creeps, killing these gives you gold. That little plus 44 and that sort of splash of coins, that is uh, money going your way if you kill that creep. If you if you uh, kill a friendly creep when it gets low on health, you deny it. The enemy doesn't get XP for it and they don't get gold for it, so it's a nice way of sort of limiting the enemy's farm. Um, and that's uh, that's basically what you do with an aggressive tri lane, as Shane called it. That's where you sort of normally you would put the heroes that you want to get farm on up here in your safe lane. But what you're doing is saying, well, we're just going to fight you three v three, and we're just going to go and take the fight right to your safe lane and make it uncomfortable for you right from the start. Now, Blissy, you were saying that Rabbit was kind of uh, one of the newer members on the LGD team, and. I think they recognized it in yeah. that last game. Hey, we gave him an easy ride. Now let's 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 take it to your IG style, and they've gone right up in his yeah. face early on. Put him under the cosh. Like, yeah. yeah. Aerith isn't a hero that does too well against this aggressive sort of scenario. You kind of want him to be able to get around the map. You want him to be the aggressor. He does. He has so little HP. He has no armor. What to speak of? He's like a little bird, you know, in the air yeah. that like kind of pecks at you and is annoying. But if you swat him once, he, he just goes down. He's like, I was kidding. But, <laughs> so Skyrath, you want him to be annoying. You want him to get around the map. If, as Ted talked about last game, he has so little health, even as he builds items, yeah. so that it's important for you to be the one going on them. And LGD, that's been taken away from them. And the rest of their lanes are suffering as a result, too. They put um, they put Invoker in a favorable situation against an Earthshaker, a melee-type hero that doesn't really have a lot of mana. He can't really spam his spells. This isn't a type of game where you can just cast your spells like over and over and over again. You have to be smart with the amount of times you use it. Yeah. So he's having a difficult time up here, and at bottom, Kunkka actually rotates here at top to try to help the Earthshaker out because he's having a bad time of it and he's getting quite oh, low. Is he going to fall? No. I think he should he, be I fine. Think he might be able to get him. He's hemmed in, but no, oh. the Ghost Walk, he's turned so invisible, in comes Alchemist, charging up that stun, here he comes, oh, with the Soul Strike, might just hit, it just oh. misses, Yao though, he's going to take too much damage, one more to attack from Invoker, and down he goes, that's 3 nothing, 3 nothing to IG and kills, and that's, that was uh, a rotation that completely and failed to bottom as well. and they got a kill down here, okay, on Razor. IG playing so well. Yeah, this Look. is just all Tron, playing yeah. with the uh, Mirana. Yeah. That's, I think that's three long-range arrows he landed yeah. in a row. That's really impressive. What he does is he uses the bushes to hide the arrow, so he only comes out at the last second. And I think now Faith and Invoker, this is, uh, as you can see, look at how they're being forced back by those tower shots. At this early stage, 
The Invoker is only, uh, sorry, the, the Invoker is level 5. The Alchemist is only level 4. So these tower shots, uh, you can see those big sort of long-range blasts of energy from the tower. They really hurt. As the game goes on, they do tend to matter less because your hit points tend to be higher. What you were saying, Shane, about Skyrath Mage and how even if you build items, was that you or, or him? That was me, but... It was him, but I'll, I'll address it to Shane. doesn't matter. Okay. Oh my god, we got disconnect. This is fairly huge. All right. Got to hope they disc they okay. reconnect. Anyway, just quickly, uh, what Bliss was saying... Uh, one of the IGs... Blitzchain. Blitzchain was saying that Skyrath Mage, even as he builds items, he doesn't gain hit points. I'm sure that was you. No, that was me. I literally just said it like two minutes ago. Dude, I was focusing on other things, but I heard the comment. Anyway, if you look at the cost of his spells, his ultimate, Look at the cost of the mana. At, at, the, at the, the highest level, it costs 800 mana. That is hugely expensive, given how his mana pool doesn't sort of... It can't manage that amount no, of No, no. It's of it, like, so, he's kind of a, a one-hit one wonder. Right. Like, so he, you have to build plus mana items, items that give you more mana. Otherwise, you're basically not getting your spells up. So I, that's the one thing about Dota, is all the heroes are balanced in that regard. They all have a, a good thing and a bad thing about okay. them. Okay. If you look at what... Uh, look at Invoker here. He basically, the Faceless Void has said to him, okay, I'm going to Chronosphere in middle. He's communicated that to him, and then he immediately uh, sets up the Chronosphere, then Schwan will hit with the arrow, and then they'll strike on top of it. It's like, this kind of stuff takes a lot of communication. So if you're playing your pub games, don't just sit there saying nothing, you know what I mean? T talk to your teammates and tell them what's what. Um, okay, so IG reconnecting on the Viper. So I'm not sure what I was saying. I thought I completely forgot we were right. still live. What IG also did with the aggressive trial is they forced uh, LGD's supports to stay down there. And Faces Void isn't exactly the best mid laner. Like he's kind of he's kind of weak and easy to gank. There, there's the, the combo. Apparently the main stream is down. Yeah. Newbie stream. Yeah, we're the only ones. If you want to watch TI, you've got to be here, people. <laughs> um, our stream's probably down as well, is it? No, our stream's up. I was just watching it. We're the best! Yes! Woo! They kept us alive, guys. <laughs> We're winning the survivor fight of casting. We can uh, only save one stream. <laughs> I gave that lad at the door. Give them a newbie stream. We were talking about how we should have, like, a, a fight amongst the casters, like a fist fight. Yes. Oh, yeah. Who gets a cast? You yeah. were here, Ted. Yeah, you weren't here for this. Your memory is so bad. Dude, I, I'm old. That's not a good excuse. It is a good excuse. My mom's, like, 54, and she remembers everything, except That's how old true. I am, what my name is. What you look she's like? Got, she's got to remember things about you. No. Gotta keep an Dyer's eye on you, dude. Top tower is under LGD kind of resetting a little bit, but they're down 5-0 to zero right now. Just being kind of picked apart. And on bottom, they're gonna go on Ferrari. He's completely alone. Playing the Viper. Oh, the shaker. The stun goes as well. Dealing so much damage. How much does he have so far? Bomb. Plus 56. Radiant's That's enough to kill him. First kill attack. on the board for LGD, and that was a huge one. Yeah. Getting it on the core Viper. But meanwhile, they've got two other cores. They've got this Invoker. They've got this Faceless Void. This is a really greedy lineup by IG. They've got a roaming Mirana, a hero you normally see as a carry. If she doesn't do anything on the map, she needs levels yeah. and items. And so if she's not getting arrows hit, if she's not getting the roaming necessary, necessary for... Uh, her to scale better into the late game, she's going to be so useless. She's actually just going to be an arrow, like, yeah, into yeah. the late game. And so, IG, they picked such a greedy lineup, and they're making it work. And even look at Invoker's item choice. He's gone for a hand of Midas. He wants to increase the advantage they have right now. He, he feels so safe in the top lane. He's like, okay, they're probably not going to come gank me, so I'm going to buy this hand of Midas and increase our lead. It's yeah, the hand of Midas is just, it's not an item that really gives you anything. The plus 30 uh, tax rate is yeah. so negligible, but it's an investment into the future. You're saving for your college kids, you know? Yeah. Well, it's it's you're, a bit of a gamble, though, yeah. too. Because they might suck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what what <laughs> if they don't do their kids. exams? Like, yeah. She's like, I just spent 80 years you trying to waste. get you into college. This hand of Midas was a waste of time. So YYF and mid continuing to farm. It looks he's like he's so going well. behind the Midas as well. Just a really greedy lineup overall by IG, and this might exactly be what LG need, needs to get back into this back game. In, yeah. But, but they have to punish this. The whole thing behind it is Chuan and Faith. They're the ones that allow this kind of strategy to work because they they roam around the map, they make kills, and they make space for this green. Radiance could be in trouble top here. tower is under but attack. But there's the silence, that weird sort Dyer's of symbol underneath him. Attack. That's the, the Skyrath Mage silence, but uh, it didn't work at all. So they're just going to do, uh, like Litz always says, if you fail fortified. one objective, you've got to have another one. So what they're going to do instead is push this tower. They've got five of them there. There's no reason not to push this tower down. When we say push, we mean kill the enemy creeps quicker than you would when you're just Radiant's trying to farm them. Just come in there, attack. smash them, smash the tower down. But uh, I think IG might try and defend here. If you oh, think like they're interested in giving this off and win, he's going to get Chronosphered up. He should die. 
surely, but so much damage being stolen by Raven. YYF, he's so low. Is he gonna go down? No, the Void manages to get away. Viper gonna slow down and actually Yao gonna come back in, doing tons of damage. Is there any sort of follow-up for I for LGD? And yes, they're able to kill the Mirana. The Fissure flies again. Alchemist gonna go down, but Ferrari chasing everybody down, realizing they don't have too much. Is he gonna go down as well? The Viper is so low. One more hit should be able to get him. Yes, he goes down as well, and that was so huge for LGD. Trading two years with the Sun Strike! Baby! That was two Sun Strikes in that team fight. Oh, fantastic. IG, what looked awful for them, getting kited Dyer's around, getting actually slammed attack. by the yeah. Earthshaker Echo Slam, but able to turn around IG because of that Sun Strike. And meanwhile, at top, while that was happening, he just continued to farm. Yeah, he's not moving. He's like, I got my hand on Midas. You guys team fight. I'll use the Sun Strike from across the map to gain experience and gold. Oh my god. That was an Dyer's ideal team fight as well for LGD. Attack. They were able yeah, to get the big... So well yeah, the, yeah, the big Echo Slam. He walked into the center of every hero and, and was able to nail it. The only got one. I think yeah. that one of the biggest problems they had in that fight was that the Conker didn't have the levels or the mana to do what he really needed to do. He was kind of caught out. If he'd had a boat there, I think the Dyer's whole fight would have been different because they don't have a mechanism yet. They would have loved to get that extra health from the Conker's run. That really could turn things around for them. But uh, mm. I think as he gets leveled up, um, then, then things will start to change for them because in the team fights, Kunk will become a big problem. They did get the tower though on the bright side. Yeah, they did get the tower. They, they did get the tower. Yeah. They needed to take a fight. I mean, the thing is, like you said about them having the Midas, if they're allowed to farm, yeah. you're in big trouble. So if you have to start forcing them to do things they don't want to do. At the moment, they want to chill. XI in top lane on the Volker is just like, he isn't, he's just chilling. Like he's constantly, constantly getting more and more gold this whole time. He has 60 creep kills. If they, you can... they tried that gank run, didn't they? He, With yeah. the Earthshaker and the Conqueror, yeah. it didn't work, and they were sort of, I think they were that, gun that, shy now. That felt like desperate though, Radiant's almost, because they, they weren't, they weren't doing great in the bottom lane. And now he's gonna take a tower. Fortified. Unless this TP can come in from Lin, nukes down the creeps, they might be able to get the deny on this. The deny is when the tower gets low enough that you can finish it off instead of the enemy. They don't get the gold, here it goes. One more shot. Oh my, IG are gonna finish Radiant's this though, look up behind, has Ferrari has a haste rune and oh. he is coming in so fast. Oh, but LGD smoke. Okay, they know. The smoke of deceit, that uh, sort of smoky, cloudy cloak you can see on them makes them invisible unless they get near an enemy. There's the X into both, Ferrari into Torrent as well. He's but so tanky. I think he's gonna be okay. That third spell, that corrosive skin makes magic spells do way, way less damage. And you move slower. You take damage, like, it, it, it does everything. It yeah, does you don't want to have to fight Viper. He does Wait, a lot of damage. Weren't you telling new players to play Viper the other day? Me? No, Blitz. Yeah, it's a really easy No, hero. you're a monster. No, he's got, like, yeah, he's, he's got two abilities. One of which is, like, you can turn on if you right-click it, and the other is an ultimate that has a pretty long cooldown, and it's so basic to use. You throw poison at somebody. Yeah. Like, that's yeah, it. It slows them, it does damage. You can't, there's no bad target to do it on. I'll yeah. be honest, I told my new friend to play Viper as well. Dyer's but bottom I felt bad after saying it. I, I would say the one thing is that people expect Viper either to go mid or to become a carry. And it, that can be a lot of responsibility because a lot of the time, if you're new, you kind of feel like you want to let somebody else do most of the fights and you can just do the simple stuff. Okay. Why don't we start it off as a support? There's that arrow dodged by Ben and they force them back. See, there's that fissure. It means that they can't, they don't have an easy route to get in and out of the fight. You can get cut off and it would be sort of like uh, the supply lines in a war where you all, you advance so quickly and then all of a sudden there's this fissure behind you. You're cut off from your team. Middle. Uh, XI, he's gonna go down almost instantly. LGD able to pick up the invoker. The entire IG squad here. Echo slam to follow. YYF with the Chronos here, not able to do too much. Ooh, Yao what? able to survive, yeah. just able to get out of there. Is he? No, he goes down to the Viper Ultimate. The Torrent, it connects on the Alchemist. Is there any follow up? The stun is still on cooldown for two more seconds. LGD gonna just pull back for half a second here. So but two core heroes go down for IG. LGD used the air checker Fisher to set up the boat from Kunkka. That was really, really nice communication and play there. Like it, was, it wasn't about Chronosphere, but because of that Fissure as well, he yeah. couldn't get round. He, he didn't have the access that he wanted. But Dragon Knight was actually sitting on the outside of it. He, he was like isolated away. Yeah. And both Midas carriers, they're going to both go down. This is what we meant by they have to punish the greed, but they're still not making a lot of headway in towers, and that's actually what they want to do. Yeah. They want to get these uh, outer towers out of the way, open up this entire side of the map. If you notice how much vision the towers give just by themselves, if you take a look, this is how much vision you give just for free, and you can fight around this zone too. 
but without any towers, you don't really have any save points. They kind of act as your bastions of hope. Yeah. You know, like, oh, You're well, beaten. if I die, well, my teammates can TP in and yeah. kind of catch them on the back end, but without those alive, they can't really respond, but LGD not able to really pressure these as IG are always pushing the fight to them. And even they're trying to force that lead, trying to get them objectives. Invoker is actually building a Necronomicon, which basically summons two extra dudes that do more damage and then push better. Oh, here's that combo. And the to fly. There comes the Mystic Flare as well. The laser's dropping on the ground. That's all the burst damage that LGD have, though. Not much to follow, and DDC manages to kill the Invoker, though. But as a trade, they do pick off Lin. That is one core for one core, so it's okay, but DDC... Nailed by an arrow, he's yeah. going to go down as well now. Trian's arrows have been absolutely fantastic in this game, but bear in mind, Rabbit wasn't involved in that fight. He's bot pushing that lane, so uh, I think if he'd been there, things might have been different. He's but kind of big in this I fight. still think that's a really good trade for LGD, because the Invoker is level 11, and yeah, yeah. the higher the level, the more experience you get. going deep here, gets the stun off on It might be a bit deep. <laughs> and gets a, gets an Observer Ward down as well to give them. That's actually great. This Observer Ward here, can't be seen. These towers, remember, they give you true sight, so they can actually spot things, uh, anything invisible. They can spot if it's Radiant's too close. And Observer Ward's, of course, invisible to the enemy team, but he's put it in a perfect spot. And that gives them vision between the towers in this area here, where they know LGD are going to be lurking and loitering. So your arrows from Chuan, it's easier for him to place them, to connect them. So that was a nice move from him. All five heroes from LGD mid, while the Invoker is just farming, pushing bottom. Like, this is that kind of split push kind of thing nearly yeah. that we, we talked about. Careful. Like L IG's heroes are strong enough at this stage because of the early start that they can fight nearly 4v5. Yeah. A lot of tanks on them, a lot of beefos yeah. on IG's squad. Beefos? They're gonna, beefos. beefos. They're beefy. Okay. They're beefy boys. <laughs> kind of mean. They watch those games. <laughs> They've been drinking. They're the guys that are like, you want some protein shit? Yeah. Like right whey, after. Whey powder, dude. <laughs> but uh, they bought it in bulk. Radiant's bottom <laughs> tower is <laughs> right under now. attack. Jesus. LG, the problem for LGD right now is that they have to gather up like this. If anybody gets uh, walked in on Chrono, or if anybody gets arrowed, they're going to go down instantly. And LGD playing scared this entire time, and that opens up the rest of the map for IG. They're not really worried about anything. They're saying, okay, if we dedicate four heroes to being here, you'll do the same, and we'll always have one guy farming off the map. Yeah. Especially when, when Ferrari is the lead tank. With that corrosive skin with the mechanism is he like we saw earlier it's so hard to kill him he's such a beefy character like a see beefo. you're singing now too a beefo, beefo. yeah beefo. well you, you got me you know there's it's, a roshan now yeah so the alchemist actually has a spell called acid spray which reduces the armor of anything in the kind of green goo you see here and he also has an item called a medallion of courage which further reduces the armor as well so if you look, in, uh, Roshan actually, if you highlight over him, he has minus three armor, like, constantly. And it increases more than the uh, Alchemist. Pretty LGD, Radiant's they realize what's happening, though. Arrow attack. flies, doesn't connect on anybody. And they're not really sure what's going on. Um, LGD, they're gonna oh, check the Roshan, see that it's not Radiant's being done. IG just kind of pulls back. Attack. They're saying to themselves, okay, IG can't actually, or LGD can't finish it. So we can just wait for a more safe position. Wait for uh, she over here playing the Invoker to continue to push bottom. Radiant's and then when somebody comes to respond, then attack. we'll finish the Roshan. Okay, look at the vision though from IG. They know exactly what LGD yeah. are up to. Like, they're almost playing into their hand. Because they Radiant's smoked on the dark wars, didn't they? Yeah, and they're smoked up as fire. This is such a big commitment for the X and the Torn and the Hulk and the Fall. That'll go on the Mirana and YYF. He's going to time walk forward, just runs back. Ferrari has double damage though. Yeah, so they really I think they could have fought them there, but obviously Dying without the Mirana and without the being in lane, I think they just felt, well, if we chrono here, it's a waste. As long as it's up, LGD have to be careful oh. there. Free! Grab it! Getting hit, but the Fisher might save him. Sunstroid though doing a lot. This thing flare going down from the Skyrus Mage, and the Fisher's Void will pay for that attack. Oh, with they want more though. No damage, the stun from Alchemist slowing him down long enough. Maybe Ferrari. Look at that little poison sting attack, that little green one. That's a great arrow, and LTD and Lin in loss of trouble. LTD have lost two, but Razor's pulled back. Rabbit is in there. Misses, and now I don't buy back he, like if you buy back you really want to get a kill or two out of it, you want to get an objective. Radiance but he's, he's, he's gonna get nothing. Oh, so close though, They've, he's been fantastic in this game. The Mirana player is one from like so good. 
he's created most of the space yeah. for the uh, IG guys. Is they've got, as we talked about, a really greedy lineup. She playing the Invoker hasn't even been with them for the majority of these fights. Yeah. Continuing to just farm away. He's got the hand of Midas. He's going to accelerate better in the late game. Same for the Faceless Void. I mean, the only way that this was possible was because of Chuan's stellar play. Faith, who's roaming along with them, has done an excellent job as well. Both of their supports have died three Roshan times total. Not bad at all. IG picking up the Roshan. That's another objective for them in the bag. Yeah. And LGD, they're kind of on the back foot here. None of their heroes really have any sort of farm aside from the Razor. Yeah. I guess he's doing okay, but the Dragon Knight is really poor. The rest of their team doesn't really have too many items. They really need to get something oh. done on the map with the smoke. If you have a look at the net worth there as well, like Invoker is nearly double Dragon Knight. Oh, I didn't even know it was this bad, but it is. And IG, they're going to pop Ugh. a smoke of their own. And I'm not sure what the next move is for LGD. They're kind of in the position where IG was, where IG can just farm, split up. Yeah. They only need one or two heroes just to kill uh, anybody from LGD. I mean, we saw in that fight, they, they, la I mean, they exploded the Marana, so they can nuke down some of the supports, but... The Alchemist and the Viper are hard to kill, Invoker in the team fights, and Faceless Void is tough to lock down, so it is going to be hard for LGD. That's I think CD does well, has done really well as the Conquer, his boats and torrents. Yeah, he's been spot on with them. To but it's just not enough. Oh, and another arrow, and a Sunstrike, ooh. Ouch. <laughs> this is funny, because it's the same kind of thing that LGD did yeah, yeah, it is. in the last it's game. It's the Sunstrike, whoever has it seems to be able to set up a Rules lot better the on sun. the map. Yeah, it's so it good. the sun. It seems pretty strong. That'd be kind of broken if you could just take control of the sun in this game. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's Phoenix. It's like, burn my enemies. Zap. So Ferrari with his Aegis of Dyer's immortality is under can, like, attack. go up to the front line. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't have to be afraid of anything. Like, if the LGD go on him, it's fine. Like, he can, the mechanism, too. Yeah. He, he wants them to go on them. Look at these Necronomicon units there. So powerful. Like, 75 and 120 damage each. Yeah. And they just add that push. And the red, the melee, uh, Necro 3. Oh, Chronos there, the Hope Cats hit 3. Fireway F, did a lot of damage to DDC. Meatball hits Rabbit. Oh, this is bad. LGD, IG, but just exploded. A nice Echo Slam, but the follow up isn't there. And the Earthshaker goes down. And now they can finish off this tier 2 mid. Oh, it's gone. It's so gone. They can just go grab their creeps. Yeah, they just chill, go back to farming. It's under attack. Mm. No rush. And she, she wasn't even there. He was, he, he was. was three and a half grand. He was there. He was, and now he's gone. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah. That's he's the one who summoned the the next one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He threw a he threw he a threw giant a rock at them. He threw a meatball. That's right. It was a, it wasn't conspicuous at all. <laughs> <laughs> it was hard to tell he was in that fight. <laughs> Do you ever get when you you pause the screen when the meatball just starts and it's, it's like huge. Hey, it takes up your whole screen nearly if you get the right angle. Oh, it's okay. Ted has old man eyes. It was difficult for him to see that. I he saw us. I did see him. I, I even called him. Yeah. Oh, G might be actually in trouble here. Could he have? Yeah, the back, sir. Oh. That's a nice chunk of change. The combination is cool. I'm sure this is what LGD thought of. They're like, okay, we'll, we'll hit this X Torn boat combo, and then with the Mystic Flare, we should be able to blow anybody up instantly. But again, they haven't. They just haven't been able to execute IG's lineup, as we talked about at the beginning of the game. It's so much easier to do. They just have to survive. They've got the Faceless Void at the Kronos here. All the Viper has to do is chip away at you while this happens. Yeah. If you can't kill him, he's just going to do too much to you in the team fight. And now he's got a BKB, which makes him immune to magical damage. The Black King Bar. It's just so much easier for IG to execute their draft. I also really like tanky support heroes like Alchemist. Like, for example, like Morana here has she has 900 life, mm. whereas Alchemist, without his ultimate on, has like a thousand one hundred life. And then he gains more health when he turns his ultimate on and regen. So if you, if you were to try and initiate, like in team fights, don't you always want to go for the support heroes? So the easy kills, nearly at the start. The support heroes are usually what give you your disable as well. Yeah. So focusing them in team fights is key, and trying to focus fate. It's going to be difficult. LGD moving around as a team. If you notice, the three of them are up here just so that they can farm. Not accomplishing a whole lot. Lin's just kind of walking around the map. If you watch Rabbit he's here, standing he's, just, still. he's standing still. I think this is the point where Shane talked about where they're saying, okay, what went wrong here? They haven't lost any racks yet, but they're not farming whatsoever. Rabbit's been here for about a no, minute. They're just sitting at their computers yeah, and talking Lin, to each other. Lin's been <laughs> sitting here in mid for no, like, seriously. yeah, look. He walked, no, he's, he walked he's up and he still. walked down. And now he's just, yeah, they're all, they're actually all just standing still there, not sure what to do. Oh, okay, Lin's continuing to sit here mid, not really accomplishing a whole Dyer's lot. This has to be the point of the game attack. where they're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. okay, they're it's 11 to 19, and it looks 
Oh, it's okay, five. But the gold difference is almost. I, I think he's checking, checking Twitter, dude. Just saying, like, are people flaming him? Nah, who's we'll blaming him? Dyer's exactly. Honestly, yeah, on the air checker has been playing really well. Like, even though his team yeah. isn't doing so great, Some and he, great he, fishers and he, does, he might even have the best score, but he's got amazing fishers and amazing, amazing echo slams. Yeah. Yeah. So the first time, okay, no, Lin's gonna continue to just kind of sit around there. Ig, they're content to farm out this entire map. They've got this. They've got the mid tower as far as they want to take it. They can defend this top tower. Just the way for them to farm is a lot Radiant's easier for LGD tower. to I think farm. That's why Lin didn't go anywhere. Because if he pushes he's still out to he's here, no, but he's still he's still like. But but if he pushes out to here, right? He's he can be ganked from here. Remember, you've still got you've got Moonlight Shadow. The face of Void can just pop in and Chronosphere and catch him out. So I just th and also. Chuan has scared the hell out of him with these arrows. Yeah. He sounded like six or seven arrows. So I think Lin's like, I don't want to be that guy who gets caught out mid and my team's like, what are you doing? Attack. But he has to take that risk just to get back into the game. If he's not, if he's just going to sit there not farming, yeah, then I know. they're just it's getting just further tough. behind. It's a tough spot for them. I can see his mindset. The problem is as well, it only takes one or two or three of them to kill Lin. Whereas it'll take all five Radiant's of them to kill one person on LGD. Yeah. Here comes the Kronos here. It lands on the Dragon Knight. He gets arrowed as well oh, from the no, Marana. Sure. There's that Earthshaker Fissure though. That'll actually stop most of the duration. He's so tanky. He's got tons of armor. He's going to be able to just walk away. IG not able to get the kill, but it doesn't really quite matter. They were able to get this bottom tower out. And again Double at top, damage. they're going to just rotate one more hero to farm this. If you look oh. at Rabbit's farm in this game compared to last game, that aggressive tri lane really did the business on him. It meant that he couldn't farm uh, in any way near the piece he would have wanted. And I think now he's kind of gimped. Look at the amount of gold Fate has. Right, so basically, Goblin's Greed is his third spell. And I, every time he kills a creep, he gains an extra bonus gold. And it keeps on building up and building up. So if he kills loads of creeps, like small creeps consecutively, he can make so much gold so fast. He has 5,000 gold on a support hero. What's he going to buy? An AC, maybe? Like an Assault Grace? He can get a Tier 4 item, no problem. Yeah. An IG in complete control of this game. Again, LGD kind of just grouped up into the base. They're kind of afraid to leave unless they're grouped up as five. But if you're grouped up as five, you're not getting as much gold. You're not getting as much experience. LGD, they don't really have a lot of gold reserves banked up like uh, Faith does on this Optimus. So it's not like they can oh. buy a whole lot of things to get back into this game. They just have to take the team fight of their lives. He's actually gone for a blink dagger Radiant's and allows him to teleport a attack. short distance so he can get right up in their face with that uh, unstable concoction yeah. stone. They've enjoyed the, uh, oh my God. the DDC almost got a... So, here's a weird thing about the Necrook creeps. When you kill them, Radiant's if you finish them off, is under take attack. a big old chunk of damage. And a DDC on the Skyrath Mage, only having 967 health, killed one of the Necrook creeps and almost died for it. Yeah, took away two, two thirds of his health, but... And a mid. Bonus here, he's gonna really land on much. DDC, he's gonna he's gonna get taken down shortly here. The torrent does land, but not able to do a whole lot of damage. IG finally deciding to group up and push up. They don't have the Chronos here. They might just actually delay this game even more, wait for the Chronos here to get up. That might actually be their option. They're just backing off again as a group. This is what they're doing. They, they're choosing to be really methodical and slow about this game. This is their style. Yeah, really. Do you remember? Do you remember when Ferrari was playing the Thinker and he had such an amazing start? Like they could have won the game, but they didn't want to risk it. They wanted to secure their victory. They relaxed. They took yeah. it slow. Why risk this game though? Exactly. Of all games to risk. Of all yeah. games. If you lose this game, you're knocked out of the tournament. Yeah. There's like that's like a hundred, two hundred thousand dollar difference between what you get. Ig. Even though we can see that they're in the lead, maybe they don't feel it as much. They're saying to themselves, okay. We might be ahead, but why bother letting them get back into the game? Hmm. The thing about, um, about the way IG played is um, I tend to think of them as being more of this kind of methodical, secting the enemy, and LGD, so far in the tournament, I've, I've seen them playing this very aggressive sort of in-your-face style. Yeah. And I'm impressed by the way that IG said, well, let's see how you like it, and sort of put that aggressive try lane. I, I really think that that shut things down really so did, yeah. well and allowed Invoker to just chill top and just involve himself attack. with those sun strikes. If they could have banned out Invoker or got him themselves, LGD, so I think this whole game would have been different. The Invoker has been absolutely huge. I think, yeah, the last game and this game come a lot down to draft. Like, yeah. I think IG got the heroes they wanted and they were really, really happy with the, the draft. Whereas I think LGD felt forced almost to pick the Skyrath, yeah. so they they wouldn't they would have the combo with the like, to deny IG of it. Like, yeah, it's really uh, like they have so much farm. It's... LGD actually for the first time in about 
10 minutes I've left they're the on the other side of the map yeah. they're over here so what they need to do is try and Dyer's get some vision down is under in attack. the enemy jungle at the moment this whole area is completely unknown and remember Mirana has a spell Moonlight Shadow that enables her to turn herself and her entire team invisible fantastic for a surprise attacks and uh, I wonder if LGD are going to just have to push the lane out in other words force the enemy creeps back, kill the enemy creeps very quickly, and push their lane in their favor. At this stage of the game, remember, that means pushing the your friendly creeps forward into battle. So sort of, you know, going in and sort of uh, trying to push the lanes up as much as possible, take some enemy structures. Um, that's about all they can do at this stage. Yeah, while, while that's happening though, IG are farming all up the jungle. Yeah. These ancients, like farming the lanes, like they are getting so much more. And Fate, who's like, at the start of the game, he was roaming, ganking, trying to get kills. He's like, okay guys, I'm just gonna chill, I'm gonna farm now. This is my time, I've got a black king bar, and so, which makes me completely immune to magic damage. So all of a sudden, your Skyrath Kunkka thing, I don't care about it, you know what I mean? You know he's got 17 assists. Yeah, and, and one death. One kill, and one, one death. 17 assists. Now a lot of that will have come from the fact that his acid spray, which he puts down no, at the start of the fight, sits on the floor down. and everybody who takes damage from it and then subsequently dies will count as an assist for Faith, but uh, it's still impressive. Yeah, it is yeah. really Ferrari impressive. and him have both been in 18 of their 20 kills. Yeah. That means they've gotten just a ton of experience and levels and gold for free. LGD, they're being pushed in now. IG, I don't... I think they can just be... They can just... They have the Aegis now. They have the Black King bar on their Alchemist. They have a Black King bar on Ferrari as well. I think they can just push up this middle lane. Yeah. There's not a whole, whole lot that they have to worry about. Even if one of your heroes gets picked off, you should still be strong enough to be able to take racks. They also, with that Aghanim Scepter on uh, Faces Void as well, it basically allows his ulti to last longer and decreases the cooldown. So he can cast out more and more. Like, Ooh, oh, an arrow, the arrow lands. lands. Such a long range arrow. It lands on DDC. It blinks forward by Alchemist. Not going to be able to do much off of it. They're trying to push up this tower, but... IG being pushed back a little bit. They have that buffer with the acid spray from Alchemist though. Like, you don't really want to be in that, in that area. And Lin gonna get nailed by the arrow. Razor gets stuck as well. And here comes the combination now. The Chrono Sphere lands on four oh. heroes. Yao though in the corner locks them down with the Echo Slam. The Fissure not quite back up yet. And LGD taking some damage. Kunkka just running away. The boat lands on the Alchemist, but... IG being pushed back Dyer's now, all five of them still alive, just attack. the Skyrath Mage down for LGD with their big ultimate ability, the Echo Slam, that was what's going to save them in the yeah, game. It, was a beast it landed point. on everybody, but unable to do too much to send them back. Kunkka's boat is down as well. Nothing's really going to stop IG now from taking this tower and being able to push for Radiant racks. The Necro minions came off cooldown as well, which allowed them to push so much faster. Rather in the last game, I think he had his Aghanim Scepter by now, doesn't have it. So in the team fights, his contribution is okay, but he's got to worry about getting blowed up. Yeah. Ferrari getting pretty low, but he does have the Aegis of Immortal, so if he does die, he'll be back alive again. Tower getting quite low, all of LGD ready for this. Everybody back up alive. The Skyrath Mage is such a low level that if he dies, he's instantly back alive. IG gonna just farm out their jungle, say, okay, we'll wait two seconds for somebody to come in, and Faith is gonna be the target for them to go on. Blinks oh. out. The torrent misses, and IG now is oh, gonna collapse on top of LG. Perfect. The Chrono Sphere is up. The boat, though, is gonna come in. Doesn't connect on anybody. Rabbit on the Razor, getting pretty oh, low. The Skyrath Mage, he doesn't really have a whole lot. He's gonna drop the lasers on the ground. DD, 4 staff just came back up, but he's gonna get blown up now, too. IG still in pursuit. Radiant's the Viper Strike from the Viper is attack. up again, but they're not gonna continue to chase for this. Uh, Ferrari Radiant's still has the Aegis. They know. No Conquer, no Razor. They, they don't have to worry, they can just stand here and take this tower. Look how much health they've got, they're yeah. all perfectly fine. I thought Radiant's when he got that boat off and he added fallen. the room to his team, I thought, okay, Radiant's this is a good fight for LGD, you know, they've used all of their spells this and money. This is it for them. Yeah. Yes. Radiant's middle the problem was they went gone. after that one kill on the Alchemist, Radiant's and then they were outside the base, they were attack. cut off, some went one way, some the other, and, uh, yeah, LGD uh, probably going to lose this game now, I think it should be GG in a second. And then we'll go to... Game three, and it'll be IG against LGD to decide which of them goes down. Attention in that game. Yeah. How do you draft under that kind of pressure, really? Ooh. When you just, I mean, LGD got crushed in this game. I think you have to just forget about it. Like, an experienced team will just say, okay, we understand what we did wrong. We'll, we'll, we'll understand our flaws. Let's try and like forget about this game now and then move on to the next one. That's what IG or IG did. They, yeah. they got absolutely yeah. destroyed. And then in game two, they picked such a greedy, risky lineup. I mean, 
They had two hand of Midas's, which accelerate you into the late game, but they don't really pay off much. They had a they had a roaming Mirana and an Alchemist, both heroes you don't typically see as supports, yeah. and they still managed to be able to uh, make it work in the face of elimination. IG take the game. I think a huge amount of that was trying on the Mirana. They got three or four kills really early on. Off the bat, too. yeah, like, like one really after early another. Early like like arrow came back kill, up, cool kill. down. When your try lane loses that much, you just get so far behind that yeah. they couldn't come back into it. So well done to IG. Game three.